Hello, I am a praying mantis, and I'm here to tell you that you're going to learn to play Dammit by Blink-182 today. He speaks the truth. Damn it, Janet, for Christy Crichton's boyfriend and DLM. But before we utter any more six-letter, four-letter words, I'd like to take a moment to thank the following people for signing up for the Patreon supporter of the Cause Club, Helen Chancellor and Austin Lemke. You two, thank you very much for your support. And if you would like to find out what that's all about, the link, of course, will be in the description. Here is the 100% authentic way to play this riff. We're gonna start with A3, then A5, then D2. The second one is the same, except instead of A3, we're gonna start on E3. The third one is the same as that, except instead of E3, we're gonna start on A open. And the last one's a little bit different. It's gonna be E1, and then the reverse. D2, D open. So, A3, E3, A open, E1, D2 to open. But, the interjection, not human but, you may have noticed that A5 is the same as D open. A5, D open. I find this riff much more fun to play with D open instead of A5, so we'll have A3, D open 2. E3, D open 2. A open, D open 2, E1, and then the reverse, D to open. But you should do it whichever way you prefer. Now we're going to need some power chords. C is on the A string 3rd fret. G is on the E string 3rd fret. A is on the E string 5th fret. And F is on the E string 1st fret. So C, G, A, F. You're going to give each power chord a big beautiful open strum where it's allowed to ring out as much as it wants for one beat followed by six itty bitty little muted strums. So. However, however you may have noticed that this song is very, very, very fast and if you try to do that as all down muted strums, you have a purple eptic seizure before you reach the end, but what you can do instead is just do muted down up, down up, down ups. It's just as good and it lets you go as fast as you want. And that's what Blink-182 does live anyways. We can't know what they did in the studio. Maybe there was lots of coffee at the studio. Halfway through the verse, it picks up and it's just the same chords, but strummed out. <laughs> For the bridge, it happened once again, it turned to a friend, it's the chords, C, G, A, F. The second time, it's the same, C, G, A, but then we go F, G, F, this is growing up, back into the thing, and. And there's an octave guitar part swirling around in there. It's kind of smushed and hard to detect on the album version, but it's there and live. This happens sometimes, so this is a great guess. C, the octave chord, that's A3 and G5. Up two frets to D, up two frets to E, back to C. Repeat. C, D, and then the second time we're gonna go C, D, back to the thing. That's hard to talk and do at the same time. By the way, here's why that works. When band plays C, and octave guy plays C, 
That works for obvious reasons. But when band plays G and octave guy plays D, that works because there's a D note in your G power chord. Look, there it is on the A string fifth fret. So if band plays G and octave guy plays D, we're just accentuating that note in our G power chord. It's the same story when band plays A and octave guy plays E. There it is, A string seventh fret in your A power chord is an E note. And when band plays F and we go back down to C, it's the same thing. There's a C note there in your F power chord on the A string third fret, so that's why that works. The breakdown features a tinkly little lead guitar part. This is lovely and not too difficult. We're gonna make an A-shaped C. That's just an A shape on the fifth fret. So A, A sharp, B, C. Just pluck from B to D. Then play B3, B5, G5. Do that twice. And you just repeat those little two things over and over again. And that's it, damn it. <laughs> so out of character. Thank you so much for being here. I hope that was fun and helpful, and I will see you next time with more stuff, damn it. <laughs>